Okay, so what we're looking at is the idea of differentials and of linear approximations. So back in Calc 1, uh, you did learn about differentials. The idea of a differential is this. Um, if I'm given f of y equals f of x, a small change in x in that function will produce a small change in y. That is, my change in y will be equal to f of x plus delta x. And remember, that's a small change in x minus f of x. Now, um, depending on the function, this change, this f of x plus delta x minus f of x, may be difficult or maybe even impossible to calculate. So the differential is a tool that we use to approximate the true change in y. And the differential is represented uh, with dy equals f prime of x dx. Now, one thing to notice is that um, up here, this is the true change in y. If I change my x just a little bit, it will create a change in y. Whereas this down here is an approximation to that. So when we're working with differentials, we often say that delta x and dx, because they are the independent, x is the independent variable, those are going to be the same value. But where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable, if I make a ch small change in x, then my change in y will depend on that. And um, what will happen is, and y being the independent variable, then the change in y will be e approximated by dy. Now that's a common um, idea taught in Calc 1. So how does that play out in, in Calc 1? Well, there's typically two places that we see the differential used. And so one of the places is linear approximation and then error analysis. And so, for example, you can use these ideas to create an approximation for, let's say, the square root function. Okay, This allows us to estimate values like the square root of 2.1 which isn't a perfect square or other square roots. The other place where uh, differentials are often used is integration by substitution. And that's where um, the differential is commonly used in a Calc 1 setting. So what does it look like in Calc 3? Well, a couple of things. First of all, remember that we're considering our function to be the z coordinate or the z direction. So if I have z as a function of x and y, we've been thinking of both x and y as both being uh, independent variables. So I could have a small change in x that would lead to a change in z. I could have a small change in y that could lead to a change in z. Or I could do a small change in both x and in y. And both of those could lead to a small change in z. So we're going to let delta x and delta y be increments in x and y. But remember, those are independent variables. Then the differentials of the independent variables, x and y. Similar to what we did in Calc 1, we're going to say that dx is exactly equal to d delta x, and that since y is an independent variable, dy is also going to be equal to delta y. Now, the change in z is going to be f of x plus that change in x, comma, y plus the change, small change in y, minus f of x and y. And this is going to create our small change in z. Now remember, x and y were our independent variables. That means z is our dependent variable. And so um, this may be 
not so simple to compute this change in z. So much like we did in Calc 1, we're going to say that our change in z is approximately equal to our differential. Now, notice that I'm not calling it just a differential, but I'm calling it a total differential. Total referring to that I'm keeping track of all of my independent variables. So up here we saw that z is a function of both x and y. So as I think about this change in z, I need to account for both changes in x and possible changes in y. So those are going to be important to me as I start thinking about the total differential. So the total differential is set up quite similar to the way it is in Calc 1. I'll have the derivative, except it's now a partial derivative, of z with respect to x, differential x, plus the derivative with respect to y, in this case partial derivative, uh, differential y. So it'll be of this form. So let's go ahead and look at an example of finding the total differential of a particular function. So what I have here is the function f of x and y equals cosine xy plus x minus y. And down here in the corner we have um, that form for the total differential. And notice for this form that I need both partial derivatives of my function. So I'm going to go ahead and find the partial of f with respect to x. And when I look at the cosine function, uh, the argument does have an x in it. So I will have to use the chain rule. And so derivative of cosine is sine. And the derivative inside that cosine with respect to x is going to give me a y. So I'm going to have negative y cosine of xy. That takes care of the cosine term. Doing a partial with respect to x, now I have this plus x term, so that's going to be a plus 1. And now I have this minus y term, that's going to be a minus 0. I do something similar, I take the partial of f with respect to y. This time though I'm going to get negative x cosine of xy uh, plus 0 minus 1. So those are the two partial derivatives that I need to be able to do my total differential. So my total differential is going to be dz my partial of f with respect to x, so negative y cosine of xy plus 1 differential x, because that's the partial derivative with respect to x, plus negative x cosine of xy minus 1 dy. So this would be our total differential for this particular function. And we're going to explore how we would actually um, be using this in approximations and um, error analysis.